and welcome to another Mind and Soul Foundation Peace Practice. And this one is all about letting go. Letting go is both a biblical and a mindful practice. And I came across a beautiful story about a desert father called Moses. It's in the book called The Desert Fathers, a Penguin Classic, translated and with an introduction by Benedict Ward. And the story goes like this. In Scetus, a brother was once found guilty. They assembled the brothers and sent a message to Moses, telling him to come. But he would not come. Then the presbyter sent again, saying, Come, for the gathering of monks is waiting for you. Moses got up and went. He took with him an old basket which he filled with sand. He carried it on his back. The brothers went to meet him and said, What does this mean, Abba? He said, My sins run out behind me, and I do not see them. And I have come to judge another. My sins run out behind me, and I do not see them. And I have come to judge another. They listened to him and said no more to the brother who had sinned but forgave him. This is, of course, in the context of being non-judgmental, which we'll come back to. But in a bit of associative logic, there are different types of logic, propositional logic, but associative logic, the thing that came into my mind was the idea of deliberately letting things go, uh, like bitterness as you walk, grudges, unforgiveness, harsh words from others, let them flow out behind you like sand, as in this story of Moses the Desert Father. In the walking, you intentionally let all these feelings and thoughts flow out behind you. You let them go. You even imagine them like grains of sand falling to the ground behind you. You let them go. And already had a sense that walking was spiritually therapeutic in this way that very often I was able to let go of things even uh, on a short walk. So what I did then for a period of years was go on the pilgrimage walk to Santiago de Compostela in Spain known as the Camino. I would deliberately walk letting go of stresses of each year, any difficulties, any harsh words from people, uh, any judgments, any of my judgments, I let them go. I would go for a week and do this and found it really helpful. It was important to start a new year with a short account. And of course I was unable to do it in lockdown. But we've been in lockdown for more than a year and I know things are lifting. But what do you need to let go of? If you're able to take a day, to take a walk, and intentionally let go of all the stress and difficulties you've experienced, relational or otherwise, that have entangled you, then do it. That can be your peace practice out of this uh, little meditation. Or if that's more difficult for you, then imagine a journey in your head where as you journey, you let go of things and leave them behind. You might be going in a, imagine you're going in a car or a plane or a train, however you want to do it, and you can picture your favourite scenes uh, as you do it, but just let things go. And of course, in a train we often see that, don't we, as we look out the window, things, we see them and then they're behind us. And of course, Hebrews 12 verse 1 says this, let go, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. This is in the context of our spiritual journey. And then it says, and then let us run with perseverance the race uh, set before us. So as we let things go, we have more time and are better able to walk, run the race set before us. We are, as disciples of Jesus, called to be on the way. In Mark's Gospel, there's so many references uh, that are lost in the English about being uh, on the way. So letting go means that we don't get weighed down on the way. And letting go is also, as I said, a mindfulness peace practice. 
letting go of negative thoughts is a key practice. And I just want to give you the muscle of attention that enables us to begin to do this. It's a flabby muscle that doesn't get used much, but it's very important. And I'll give you a mnemonic of four letters, FM, MD. And FM, I don't know what that reminds you of, it reminds me of a radio station. So we can tune in, we can tune out uh, to negativity. We can change the radio station to something else. The other radio station is still there and will often tune itself back in, but we switch it back. FM, MD. So FM stands for focused attention. That's the F, whatever it is. Focus our attention on scripture, on chocolate, on drinking a cappuccino, on walking. Our minds will wander. And normally our minds wander to negativity, to negative thoughts, to worry, to rumination. As you notice that your mind has wandered, that is called meta-awareness. That's the M of MD. Focus your attention. Your mind will wander. Meta-awareness. One part of your mind notices that another part of your mind has wandered. And then the D, you direct it back. So you're focusing your attention. And you can do that in a moment in the little practice I'll give you. Your mind will wander. If we have a negative bias, it will normally wander to negative thoughts. You have this beautiful God-given capacity for meta awareness. You can notice that one part of your mind has wandered. Notice what it's wandered to and direct it back. So let's just notice our breathing in and out. This already takes us out of our head into the present moment, gives us a rest from our negative thoughts, retunes us to a different radio station within us that's called our experiential self. It's our body, our senses, our breath. Streams of awareness within us, our senses that are always in the present moment, just like our body just like our breath. And just say after me, I let go of the negative thoughts that entangle me. Come back to your breathing, just notice it as it comes in and out. And we say again, I let go of the negative thoughts that entangle me. Maybe already you will notice that your mind has wandered. Notice what it's wandered to, direct it back to your breath and our friends. I let go of the negative thoughts that entangle me. And notice your breathing. As you notice your breathing, you reach in into the present moment, out of mental time travel. And as we continue to practice this, the volume uh, of our negative thoughts, that radio station that's so loud, gets turned down. So a couple of ways we can let go. We can take a longer time, which is really important, I think, to do that regularly, monthly or annually, really to let go of things that have weighed us down. We can do short little meditations like we did just now. And another prayer that I found really helpful is called the Welcoming Prayer. It's from a tradition called Centering Prayer. And uh, in it, we accept the reality of whatever we feel right now. But the heart of it is also a radical letting go. And this is a helpful addition to the overall practice of letting things go. And I've adapted this prayer slightly. And we'll also give you an opportunity, sort of, with the Holy Spirit, to prayerfully consider what is it that you need to let go of. So just, I'm going to say a phrase you repeated after me. I let go of the desire for power. I let go of the desire for control. These are big things. Take up a lot of our energy. We let them go. We get a lot more energy released for more fruitful things. And all of these things we're going to let go, we actually can't control. We can't hold on to. I let go of the desire for safety. I let go of the desire for security. Maybe that's been triggered by lockdown. It's out of our control. I let go of the desire for affirmation. I let go of the desire for attention. I let go of the desire for affection. 
We need all of these things to live, but they're out of our control. Trying to control them often pushes them away. I let go of my desire for esteem. I let go of my desire for perfection. What about you? What comes to mind? I'll give you a moment to think about it. I let go of the desire for, and then you say, whatever it is. I let go of my desire for, you fill in the blank. Let's finish with a blessing. May you be able to accept the reality you face right now and commit to changing it. May you let go of the desire to have no difficult experiences. May you be able to let go of bitterness, unforgiveness, stress. Today, may you be able to start again, a new beginning, a fresh start. Say with me, I open myself to the love and presence of God and God's action within. I open myself to the love and presence of God and God's action within. Amen. Take care, God bless, and hope to see you again soon.